So the other day I'm looking through my YouTube channel and I'm noticing that there's a trend as far as what you guys are searching. Salmon. Salmon is like the top food that you guys are searching when it comes to my channel right now. So today what I want to show you is the absolute best way, in my opinion, to prepare salmon. And this comes from a lot of research because I cook salmon very often. I'd say almost on a weekly basis, it's either salmon or tuna. We try to eat fish at least once a week. And listen, I'm just going to give you the top tip right out of the starting gate. Don't overcook your salmon. It's like overcooking a steak. You just destroy it, you lose all the character, you just, you make it unpleasant. And so many of you guys, including me when I first started, we overcooked our fish. And that's why a lot of people don't cook fish or choose not to cook fish. And that's because you can really mess it up fast. With a steak, yeah, you mess it up, but it's still edible. When you really overcook fish, it's just real dry and it's not pleasant for anyone. I'll show you a little bit more on that later to make sure that you don't overcook your salmon. Let's go ahead and get a fire started because that's the first step to perfect salmon. First step to the perfect salmon is when you're at the grocery store or wherever you go, the fish market, to get your salmon. If at all possible, you're looking for wild caught salmon. In this case, it's wild king salmon from Alaska. You're looking for the darkest orange wild caught salmon you can find. The problem is, so many times wild caught salmon is really thin. Your salmon is going to be so much better if you can get a thick piece. The thickness of it really matters. So try to get the thickest wild caught salmon that you can possibly get. That rich color leads to rich flavor. Although I like cooking on the Santa Maria grill, which you saw just a few minutes ago, this is a perfect cook for the old Weber kettle. And what you just saw me do is pour some water in this slow and sear. The slow and sear is gonna help us have those two zones on the Weber kettle. We're gonna have a hot zone where all the charcoal is here. And then on this side, we're gonna have a indirect zone and that's where we'll finish the salmon, get a hot sear and then indirect up to the proper temperature. We're gonna make sure the vent is all the way open. We wanna get a very hot temperature in this Weber kettle so we can get a wonderful sear. The next step to perfect salmon is drying the outside of the salmon, just like a steak. The reason we wanna dry the outside of the salmon is because that's gonna allow us to get a better crust. And I think in most people's opinion, but definitely in mine, one of the key parts of perfect salmon is a nice crunchy crust. It's got just a little bit of crunch on the outside and it's tender and juicy on the inside. That's when you have perfect salmon. Now we're just gonna spray just a little extra virgin olive oil on the, on the salmon fillets, just on the top side. Seasonings are simple. This is my SPG rub. It's about 60% pepper, 35% salt, as well as about 5% garlic. And then the magic seasoning is dill, a little dill weed. We're gonna put that on top. We don't want to take away from the salmon. We want to add to it. We want to emphasize it. And this dill helps us do that. That's it. Now it's time for this salmon to take a trip over to the Weber. Make sure you use a cast iron pan and make sure it's screaming hot before you even think about putting the salmon on. Also two tablespoons of butter. And if it, uh, if you got to do this in rounds, like I'm going to do, you're going to want to add that two tablespoons of butter pretty much every time you change fillets. That butter's nice and melted now. Now we're gonna go in with the salmon. Nope, no sizzle, out with the salmon. See that? You don't wanna put that salmon in there until you hear that sizzle. When you touch that fish to that pan and it doesn't make that sizzling sound, it's not ready. Guys, make sure you're using cast iron or stainless. 
if you're doing this on your stove and then going to the oven or whatever you're doing this on, you don't want to use a nonstick pan because you're, you're trying to get this to really hot temperatures. That's part of the magic of cooking salmon is this really hot sear right now. Let's see if we can hear a sizzle this time. Oh yeah. Push him down. Do not crowd your pan, okay? I'm gonna go just those two, just like that. How long do we cook it? That's a good question. We're gonna watch this edge where it's touching the pan. And as soon as we see that it's got a nice little crunch on it, we can verify by picking it up, but I don't even want to lift it unless I absolutely have to. You know, I'm unsure of how that sear is. When I see that edge develop right on the bottom there, I'm going to slide it over indirect and we'll finish them there. I've had that lid on to make sure we still have a roaring hot fire. I'm going to take just a little peek here and see what we're working with as far as the sear. Not quite, not quite. And it's been about four minutes, so the, the sear is everything to a perfect salmon. You want just the edge, just the crust. The magic tool for cooking salmon is a thermopen. Keep an eye on that temperature. You do not want an internal temperature to go anywhere past 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, that sear is right about where I want it. Now I'm gonna pull the salmon over to the indirect side and so now what we're waiting on is that internal temperature. We're going to go 130 to 135 and no more, no less, right in that zone, and then pull them and let them rest. Perfect. 132. We're going to go ahead and pull these. Now, what I want you to notice, you see the top here. If you've ever cooked salmon before, you know about the white ooze that can come out of salmon. And the white ooze means that you're cooking it too hard and too fast. So without getting into all the science of what it is, just know that if you see the white ooze, you need to back off on the heat. If you want to get real fancy, Take some balsamic vinegar, put it in a pot, and boil it down to about one-fourth the amount that you put in. Then you have yourself this wonderful, wonderful balsamic reduction. Put it in a little squeeze bottle and dribble it all over the salmon, the plate, the whatever you want. And you can get all kinds of fancy with it. This is probably some of the best salmon I've ever had. That little bit of crunch on the outside, a little bit of smokiness, and just the juiciness of the filet itself, man, that's some really, really good salmon. It's quick, it's easy, and it's absolutely amazing. Make sure you try this recipe out. Hope you guys have a good week. I'll see you on the next video.